Hey, this is Brian with worshiptutorials.com. I've had a number of you ask me what camera I use. Really quickly, the camera I am using right now that you're looking at the footage from is the Blackmagic Production 4K camera. It shoots just great imagery. Um, it's a 4K camera, When I'll talk about what that allows me to do in a little bit. I don't upload 4K footage, but, uh, but I do utilize the 4K in this quite a bit. It's a straight up video camera, so it doesn't do like still photography, anything like that. I really love the company and what they're doing, and uh, I think their products are great. And I actually have two of them, which is why you're seeing footage from one and I can show you the other one. I am switching systems though. I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to be using uh, moving forward, and I will also tell you that I'm selling at least one of these cameras, maybe both of them. So if you're interested in a Blackmagic production 4K camera uh, or two of these cameras, maybe if you need them for production for your church or that kind of thing, um, let me know. Click up here and send me a message uh, at Worship Tutorials on the contact page. Maybe put camera as the title of the subject and uh, I'll be in touch. Maybe we can work something out. But I thought it would be fun to show you all of the cameras I've ever used uh, to make a video at Worship Tutorials. Talk to you about what I'm going to be using in the future and maybe give you some recommendations if you're starting to look into cameras to make videos yourself. I should say that this video is not meant to be any kind of a comprehensive review of these cameras or any cameras I've used. I'm a big fan of self-education, so if you're interested in something, really do some research, watch some videos about the cameras you're interested in. Watch a bunch of videos, get people's opinions about them, and uh, hopefully my thoughts might help, uh, might help educate you a little bit as far as cameras, but I'm by no means a camera uh, guru, but I do have some experience with different cameras and different camera systems, so hopefully this is helpful. So the first video I ever uploaded uh, was from 2008, I believe, or maybe six, I can't remember. Uh, you can go way back into the archives of the videos here at YouTube and check it out, but it's this video right here. I believe I sang the song Fire Fall Down by Hillsong. I'm using the iSight camera on a 2006 MacBook Pro. And you can just see the quality of the image from that camera. But hey, it got the job done and it allowed me to start to do what I'm doing now at Worship Tutorials. Eventually I just decided I wanted something that would shoot a little bit better video. And Canon had just come out with the T1i. I think they're at the T6i by now. I don't know where they are. But I picked up a Canon T1i. So here is some footage uh, with the Canon T1i. You can see that it's just infinitely better than the EyeSight camera on my old MacBook Pro. The Canon T1i served me well. I used it for lots of still photography, made a ton of videos with it, and eventually uh, Panasonic came out with their GH1. Uh, I remember reading about the GH1 when I was in Mexico on vacation. I can't remember, when. it was when it just came out. And I remember reading about how people were saying it was so good for video and for videography, for filmmaking. And I thought, this is the kind of thing that I need. Eventually the GH2 came out and I bought a Panasonic GH2 and uh, made a bunch of videos with that. Here's an example of one. You can see that the image quality is getting better after the Panasonic kind of missed the old Canon form factor. So I eventually sold the GH2 and the lens that I had for that and I bought a Canon 70D, which is a very, very good digital SLR camera. Um, I still have the 70D. I can't show it, hold it in this video and show it to you because I'm letting a friend borrow it at the moment. But the 70D takes great video footage, great stills. It's one of the best cameras that I've ever had my hands on. Here's some footage from the 70D. I've shot a ton of videos with the 70D on Worship Tutorials. And uh, you can see that the image quality is getting better, um, better and better. Shortly after I started working at New Hope Church, which is the church I work at, our production teams at at, our, at New Hope Church uh, use a lot of Blackmagic cameras and they use some of these in particular. I kind of got turned on to them and I loved the image. One thing that I always wanted to do, I shoot raw imagery for still photos. What that means is it doesn't really do anything to the image in the camera as far as color and contrast. It kind of gives you exactly what the sensor captured and then you can manipulate the image later. And it really lets you take a, uh, an image any direction you want with it. And so I always wanted to do that with video, but I didn't know you could um, until uh, I learned about these Blackmagic cameras. They shoot in a log mode or a film mode, which means the image is really flat. It's actually terrible looking when it comes out of the camera and you have to 
uh, edit it in post-production, as they say. And it looks like this right out of the camera. So no color, really, uh, no contrast. It's super flat. So shooting in a flat log uh, format like this allows you to really do whatever you want with the image. So you can grade it and make it look like this, or you can make it look really cinematic. I love that about the, uh, the Blackmagic cameras. They do shoot 4K. What it allows you to do is if you take that really that really high resolution image and put it on a 1080p timeline, uh, you just have so much more detail in the shot. Like you can see, you know, the fibers on, on the shirt. Um, that I'm wearing and that kind of thing. It also allows you to punch in. So this is like how I set up the shot, what it looks like through the viewfinder. But when you shoot in 4K, but you don't, but you deliver a 1080 image, uh, you can punch in really tight. So you can do this with it. It's really useful for videos where there are two of us in the scene. And uh, I set the camera up kind of uh, capturing the whole, the whole scene, but I can like punch in just to one person or just to the other person. It kind of gives you three camera angles in one and you don't lose any resolution when you do that. But I did tell you that I was upgrading or not really upgrading because I don't think the image is better on what I'm going toward than the Blackmagic camera. But I have uh, moved on to Sony. So this is a Sony A7S II. The camera itself uh, is pretty small, which I like. This is a Sony 24 to 70 f4 lens. Uh, the lens makes a big difference. If you're curious about the lens that I'm using right now, these uh, Blackmagic cameras are EF, that means Canon mount, and I have a Sigma 17 to 55 f2.8 lens on that camera, which I really like. Um, but this F4 lens is great, and the Sony is a full-frame uh, sensor camera. The A7S, S means sensitivity, far fewer pixels on the sensor. The sensor is the same size, but they put fewer pixels on it, which means uh, they're more sensitive to light. So this thing, you can use it almost in complete darkness. Light is probably the most important thing to your image. So if there's not enough light in your scene, most cameras look like garbage. Um, most video does. It's all grainy and noisy and it loses, it loses contrast and it loses color and you can't get it back. Uh, but this thing will take uh, video in the dark. Basically at night you can use it with just moonlight or you know street lights. It does slow motion video. I don't use slow motion at worship tutorials, though perhaps I should because slow motion is awesome. So speaking of my three-year-old, check out this video I did of him in slow motion. So that was Seth on a swing, which is a pretty normal occurrence. You see kids swing all the time, but when you slow it down and you put really, you know, emotional music behind it, it transforms that into an experience, uh, which is what I love about making videos about slow motion in particular. You can do that. Um, you can create an emotional experience with it. Can't do that with the production 4K camera. Okay, so now you're looking at imagery from the Sony camera. Like I said, I don't consider this really an upgrade. Um, it's more just a switch because if you look at the Sony and then the Black Magic and then the Sony and then the Black Magic and you put them side by side and now I don't know which camera to look at. Um, I don't think the Sony looks better. In fact, I think the Black Magic footage looks better. I'm gonna go back to the Sony. The Sony I found doesn't handle skin tones as well as the Black Magic. Black Magic is sort of known for how well it does skin tones. Skin tones are a really important thing because if a person is in the shot, that's usually what the uh, the focus of the shot is, and certainly in these videos it is, so it needs to look natural. What, uh, what would I recommend to you if you wanna start making videos? Well, the first thing I recommend is to do what I did and use whatever camera you have. When I started making videos for YouTube, I didn't wait till I had the latest and greatest camera gear. I just used what was available to me, and it was a laptop camera. I just set it up and let it look at me. But if you wanna invest in something, I would look into the, the Canon T-I series. I think they're at the T5 or 6i now. I would go for like a, one of the older generations, like a T3, T4, T5i, because you could probably get them really cheap. You're gonna have to buy a lens with a camera like that. Um, 
and you can buy just the kit lens that comes with it will be great for making videos. And uh, they're easy to use, they produce a great image, and uh, you can build an empire with a Canon T345i. Panasonic makes great stuff. The G number series camera with interchangeable lenses is a good way to go. Um, if you can go with like a GH3, that would be a great camera. A GH4 would be a really great camera. It's a little more money. I'm actually considering buying a GH4. I need two cameras for a lot of the stuff I do. So um, I'm thinking of either keeping one of the Blackmagic cameras or selling them both and buying uh, a Sony A6300, which would be a great uh, camera for you to invest in if you have that kind of budget for one. There are lots of really good cameras. Your iPhone, if you have one, takes really good video. Um, so use that if that's what you have. But those are my recommendations, and I'll link the, to them below, kind of what I think would be, would be great. I think buying used and buying a couple generations back uh, so if the T6i is the latest, buy the T4i or the T5i. Um, it'll be a lot cheaper if you get it used. Uh, light is more important than the camera, in my opinion. So uh, the only light in this whole scene that you're seeing right now is coming from an open window. So if you can use sunlight, that's going to be the best. It's always the best. Um, now, it's not controllable, so if you want controlled lighting, uh, you would need to invest in something. For like the tutorial teaching videos, it's all controlled lighting. I don't use any natural or sunlight for that, um, and I have different lights that I use for that. But lighting is, is what you want. If you have really good light, your iPhone can make, um, I'm assuming you have an iPhone, you might not have an iPhone. Uh, any sort of smartphone that has a camera can make really good videos. Audio is also really important, um, equally as important in my opinion. So investing in your audio um, is a good idea as well. But you don't have to buy a whole bunch of stuff to get started. You just have to start with what you have. Let me know what you think of the footage. Let me know what you use. Uh, what do you like? Anyway, that's what I'm using. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.